Yo, dudes, what's up? All right, we're getting set up here. Looks like everything's good. We're gonna jump into things. It's a bit of a bit of a hectic morning. Nothing too crazy. Just uh, just businessy stuff. But we have a CT5 that looks awesome. I love this color scheme. This is my favorite. Uh, we're gonna be doing. 20% carbon on all these sides in the rear. This one is also called the jazzy one. Good morning. Fran, Brandon, Eric, Cash, Garrett, Lionel, Nathan. What's up, guys? Ben. How you doing? Are we good? Let me setting up some last minute things. It should go here. This should go. No way. I don't want to update. I never do. I always say no. And then we're going to do this in. Did you take it around the block? No. You know, this is something I've never done. I've had customers, I've had, like, years ago, I've had, you know, a few people. I remember this one guy, uh, shop that I was sitting for, guy wanted to get his, uh, his GTO tinted, and he wouldn't let the shop have the key. He was like, I'll pull it around and pull it in, and then i got to take the key because I know you guys are going to drift it in the back. No. <laughs> That is absolutely not what's going to happen. And we're like, we, we can't tint it with a, the key. And then he's like, well, I guess then you're not going to tint it. <laughs> it's like, okay. So then he left. Like, what do you expect? I have absolutely zero desire to, like, drive somebody's car around the back. I appreciate them from literally the parking spot to here back to the parking spot. That's it. That's as far as that ever goes. All right, we're getting things going here. Uh oh. I think he's back. Oh my goodness, it's coming out of this one. Why is it coming out of that one? Like I said, lots and lots of things. I think we're good now. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm catching up a little bit. Couple burnouts, yeah, no. <laughs> so I put this question in the Facebook group, but I wanna start doing my own work on the side because my dealership work isn't where it needs to be. Any ideas how to keep costs kind of down, still providing quality product? Well. Um, you can still provide a quality product without breaking the bank, honestly. The Helios, uh, the Helios Carbon, um, or Helios uh, da, 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 Orbit, that's a, that's a pretty good film to go with for sure. It will save you a little bit of money, be very comparable to Pro Classic. Good stuff. Um, I just, I, I always hesitate to go lower than that. All right. So we're going to jump into this one. There's like, there's like three, there are like three things going on in the background. Something about the mower guy coming here. Like we, we missed him like three times because we were on vacation and stuff. And then I wasn't there. And then he's like been coming like once a week, excessively since inflation really kicked in. <laughs> and of course, he just showed up a little bit ago. And then, uh, 
And then there was the client that called yesterday saying that there's a double charge and we're trying to figure out what that is because there's nothing on my, on my payment processor. I called them and they said, yeah, there's nothing on your end. So I'm not sure what it is. Tell them to call his bank. So we're trying to sort that out. Um, just little things, you know, little things here and there that I'm trying to figure out. And then the glass shop called me and they're like, hey, guess who left? They had a temporary tinter and, uh, and he decided to just split after leaving some bad work there. So I'm gonna try and help them out for a day, uh, just one day, not one day a week. And then, you know, trying to, trying to handle things. But I just wanna, I just wanna focus. I just wanna focus and tint ugh, this one. All right, let me untangle this. I think this was very simple and I made it more complicated than it needs to be. When the wheel, window peels, is it an installation problem? Uh, yes. It's definitely an installation problem. The thing is, um, there like I'll see some people jump to, oh, the customer rolled it down early. Like, oh, this window peeled after a month. I can't believe he rolled it down early. Dude, you should be able to roll it down basically immediately after you're done tinting it in most cases. Just to make sure everything's locked down right. It helps with the curing process, but when you have a good film with a good glue, it's, it's nothing to worry about. So, somebody goes away, random window peels, you just gotta take care of it. It's really not a big deal though, because I even have them peel occasionally. Hasn't happened in a while. Generally seems to happen um, more in the winter time when things are cold. But you take care of them, you redo what peeled, and then usually it's, it's only one. On the rare occasion, it happened to be two. And you figure out what the deal is, and then you, uh, you move on. Uh-oh. Hello, what's up? Oh, I'm sorry, you know what, I just realized something. Yeah, what's up? Build a three because you, call, you should call this Monday. Okay. Well, they said it can call Monday just to double check, so I'll call them later. Yeah, because we didn't get anything yet, so. Okay. Are you late? Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. But it's on the desktop, not the GoPro, but we're switching back. Bye. Love you. Okay, cool. I'm glad that wasn't an emergency. <laughs> this damn window drives me crazy. Um, I want to get into tinting. I even tinted the windows on my car to practice. Where should I start to try and make this a career? Just keep doing that. So you tinted your own windows. Honestly, next thing I would do is, hey, I will. <laughs> oh my God, I just can't. I can't focus right now. So, okay. If you, uh, you practice, you tint your own car, that's an awesome vehicle to then do it again. Um, and do that one, I don't know, over and over for a little bit. But during that, um, you can start pulling in clients right away. It's totally fine. There isn't anything that you really need to do. Like if you feel competent, in putting out some good work, um, then you can start it at any time. There's a lot of people putting out absolute garbage work. It's sad, but nobody told them any particular time to get started. They just got started. So what's unfortunate about the people who actually care <laughs> <laughs> is that it usually hangs them up more than people that just go do. But yeah, you can definitely do it anytime. You don't need a certification. You just really 
need the ambition to do good work, and then you'll put in the time and effort to make it happen. How many feet are in a roll? Uh, in glass aid, there's 100 feet per roll. Um, where's the rest of my stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're using this here. There's 100 feet per roll, um, so a roll's gonna last you about 10 or so back windows slash windshields. Get that prepped. Uh, is there a market for pre-faded tint, like pre-torn pre jeans? There's different types of film. There's like fader films and stuff, but not quite what you're talking. Maybe you can make it though. Uh, would it be a better idea to go completely on my own or find a shop and let me work part-time? I've had a cut a couple times, but mostly plotter work. Um, whatever you can do, uh, to get some sort of training um, will be very beneficial. There are, you, what you are gonna find though, is if you go in telling a shop uh, that you wanna go on your own, you know, there's a couple of them that are cool and there's a lot of them that aren't gonna wanna teach somebody to then just become competition. So you gotta keep that kind of stuff in mind too. And it's kind of shitty to do to other shops. Because, you know, uh, somebody running a shop was you at one point. They didn't have a shop. That shop came from somewhere, usually somewhere that, and then they grew that and they grew a team and they're proud of where they are today in a lot of cases. So they're looking for people that wanna join their team and, you know, help out with that. And some are willing to put money into you but they want to see a return on that because at the end of the day, it's business. So, um, I don't know, it's hit or miss for some people. Some people can't find a job at any tent shops. Nowadays, um, it's gonna be easier because it's super busy and shops are just looking for any type of help. This is where... <laughs> You're at like peak busy. So you have better opportunities now. Ooh, this is, I ran into this yesterday. Sometimes panels are so slick. Even this stuff doesn't quite stick to it. tape made of plastic well sure um, but it's uh, it's got a good adhesive to it so this is a sheathing tape slash house wrap tape it says Lowe's on it because that is one of the cheaper alternatives that still work really well because we're not really using it for its intended use case. It just works really well for what we do. But yeah, it's, it's plastic. Um, oh yeah, unlike painter's tape. Painter's tape kind of sucks. Painter's tape is like waxy and papery and you get it wet and it falls off. It doesn't make sense for what we do. It'll work for like one time but it's still, it's thicker than I'd like, so I like this stuff way better. Uh, let me do this one. Is 
Does it help you tuck the seals? No, it just helps keep everything cleaner. You can see your edges a little better, um, but for the most part, it's, you know, even on brand new rubber seals, this is a, I guess a, a good way to get this point across. No matter how many times you clean the side seals, you can always pull some random garbage from it. Doesn't matter if they're new, doesn't matter if they're rubber or felt. Um, you can always pull something from the side. And I tended for years and years without ever taping side seals. And now I do it on everything. It's a simple thing that just helps manage any random specks from the side. You can still have a garbage installation with it, but this is, oh man, it's like putting a brand new seal on anything. So when you get a car that's like 15 years old, this is like putting a brand new seal on it in two seconds. Like it just gives you all the advantage at making that car better. And especially on older cars, you know, even trying to keep things clean, I get the occasional random speckles in it and stuff I, you know, I try and prevent, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, boom, there's some dirt. That sucks, so taping helps. Is there much difference between dyed carbon temps in terms of heat rejection? Yep, for sure. So carbon, uh, it varies based on how much carbon is in the film. So with the 20%, you get 50% heat rejection. Um, that's because the carbon is what's actually blocking out that, um, carbon's actually blocking out that heat. With a dyed film, there's nothing blocking that heat. It's just all coming through. And with ceramic, it's ceramic. Oh, shit. Cannon. With, uh, with ceramic, uh, it's the ceramic that blocks it out, and then you can have it colored with carbon or colored with dye. Da, da, da. Why is this? sucking so much right now. <laughs> Sorry. When when thing when it rains it pours. I've got a order I gotta sort out really quick. Shipping address, somebody put a P.O. box down. We can't ship film to P.O. boxes. Happens every once in a while. But this can't load fast enough. I think that's this one. 20 by 100. No phone number. OK. I have tints on my car that came from the dealership, and they're getting very slight bluish tint from the inside. Is that dyed film? Uh, that is not necessarily dyed film. Just a characteristic of whatever film that they installed. But it's never, if it's like tint to match the rear, and it's off color like that, that's always annoying. Sorry, I'll get to cutting this in just a second. I gotta make sure somebody gets their film. Typing so fast that I mess it up. Not now. Not now.
All right, let's pose two. And then order number that one. Ship two P O boxes. So if you could get me an address, you can get your film out in S eight P. All right, cool, so we're good. We can continue. See, all these little things, and then people ask me about t-shirts. It's tough, it's tougher than it looks. <laughs> A 10 gallon cowboy hat, I didn't know. Cowboy hats were measured in gallons. So I learned something today. Yeehaw! That's what I say. To so that one, I say yeehaw. All right, there we go. Boom. Now we can start cutting some stuff out, and hopefully, hopefully we won't have an absurd headache. I like this car. They did a nice job with this one. It is a sharp car. I think I cut this slightly wide. Better to have too much than too little. Especially the white, the white and the black. It's still my favorite color scheme on a vehicle. Dark gray is like a close second. Just a hair. There we go. It's better. It's better. This is what happens when you cut it wide. On a warm day, like today, um, there's only, you know, a little bit of moisture in between the film and all the other surfaces too. So when you go to try and move your film around, sometimes it'll grab on everything. So it's nice to cut it. Um, like when you have bulk film rolled out, kind of trim it up a little bit. So everything kind of 
freeze up. Because when you go to roll this window down, you definitely don't want it to stick to all that either. You see that more on trucks and stuff. That's what happened on the F-150 the other day. And it grabbed a spot and then went shoop without me really realizing it. Tack. Cool. Looking good. Let's roll this down. That's so quiet. That window is like whisper quiet. There's a lot of them that go brrrr. That one is like dead silent. Did I talk enough about carbon and dyed film? Dyed film's still not bad though. Dyed film, I think more people give it a bad rap and they go, oh, I only install carbon and ceramic. And that's cool. I can appreciate that. Dyed film is nice and straightforward. So you can have good dyed films, and you can have bad dyed films. It's just more people are going to have more bad dyed films because it's the most common film. Dyed is, dyed is terrible in Arizona. Fails in one year most of the time. I know it's pretty brutal there, but you can still have good dyed film. Just a lot of people default to installing shit film. Do you still have Texas speech for comments? I do. Yeah, I don't I don't care where it is on earth. I'd still trust Pro Classic anywhere it goes because they don't have a warranty that says, except Arizona. <laughs> so if it fails in Arizona, oh, you better hit them up. And like clockwork. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? An 07 what? Can you, sorry, you were cutting out. Can you repeat that one more time? An 07 Impala for the 10 windows. Uh, oh, for everything with the windshield or without? Uh, without the windshield. Without the windshield would start at 290. At 290? Uh-huh. Okay, I'll call you up back. I'm sure you won't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I don't usually do that. <laughs> I just get phone call like that one was so intense. Like he I picked up the phone and he's like, What do you don't charge for ten? How does you charge for this amount of windows? And I was like, Whoa. Slow down there. <laughs> Alright, I'll call y'all back. No, you won't. <laughs> You have a good day, though. <laughs> so whenever the first thing is, like, I get so used to this. The first question is, like, just rattle off right away. It's like not even, hey, how you doing, or whatever. It's just like, hi, thank you for calling to the studio. How can I help you? How much for this? And it's, it's very urgent. It's like, all right. Should I, should I say, why even say I'll call you back? Thanks and be done. <laughs> I don't know. People just still feel obligated for something like that. But yeah, there's zero intention of actually doing that. 
I'm not gonna hurt my feelings. I love when they tell me too that they're gonna call around to a few other places. Because those phone calls are like, okay, um, I'm just, I'm not gonna be the cheapest place. And that's always like what that kind of goes down to. It's like, how much for this? Okay, I'm gonna call a couple other places and see what I can get. All right, that's fine. I don't, I, like, how do you say I'm not the cheapest place without sounding arrogant is what I'm trying to figure out. It's like, you're definitely not gonna find, like, it's just not the place that this is. It's not the cheapest. It's not the quickest. But I'm gonna put a lot of love into your car. But it's okay, we're booked out anyways. Uh, how do you combat picky customers that want Expel or Lumar and never heard of GeoShield? That's a good question. I don't try and sell things to people that aren't looking for it, I guess, I don't know. And I'm always looking to fix problems any way that I can. So like, I mean, if it makes sense to carry it and a lot of people are asking for it, but my first question is like, okay, why are you looking for that one? Because if you're, if you're trying to, you, you need to figure out how to kind of change the conversation um, right from the beginning rather than just say no. I don't have a great answer for you yet because I haven't dealt with that. Most people do not call asking for particular film brands. But if somebody does call asking for a particular film brand, that always makes, that, like, it makes me happy in a different way because those film companies are somewhat doing something right. They're getting their name out there and they're, people are then calling around looking for that particular film brand. The other part of it is sometimes they look past the shop and they just, focus on like the product, which is what you do at a lot of stores for so many other, so many other things, like a phone or, or laptop or whatever. It's like, oh, okay, all these stores have this, this item and they all sell it for usually one uniform price. So in that case, they're gonna look for that film and they're gonna figure out what place that they can get it done the least expensive still. At least, that's kind of what I would imagine. But kind of strikes me as the same type of people that call and just ask me about a price. They move out of state and they look for a particular brand I mean, that's definitely possible. I just don't run into that, that I, like I don't run into anybody asking for particular films here. It's huge with Expo, most places carry and I've seen are literally Expo dealers and that's how they push it if you get booted or something your bio grows, then you have to switch. Oh, your whole brand is based around someone else's? <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not a good position to be in. I still think that's probably like a small, like you, you might get some of that, but it's probably a small percentage of like what the actual inquiries are. Okay, so what I would do, here's, here's some ways to at least try. Um, you know, somebody asking about a particular film, they might already be set, um, but they're really not going to listen to just whatever jargon you're going to say over the phone unless they weren't very committed to that film in the first place. Um, I would probably have some comparison videos, like some honest comparison videos. Try and get a hold of it. Have something, you know, show a heat lamp, show the films, and like, 
hey, it's a great film. I don't carry it. <laughs> I like this stuff too. This stuff will go toe to toe with it. Or I like this better and this is why. Like stuff like that. You need to come at it from a different, a little bit of a different approach. But I always hate, like it, it's, it's challenging for me as a business to like somebody that's not really invested in, in you as a business is always a harder, is always a harder sell and what I, I don't like trying to waste a lot of time on. Like somebody goes on maps, they look at a couple of different places, they call them up and they're looking for the best price and the most convenient date typically or maybe the best sales pitch in there too. It, but it's all verbal. Give me something that I can show you. So even at the end of that phone call, follow up with them with like a tent whisk proposal with what I talked about. And then you might convert some of those people. But I always, I always hate trying to convince people. That's why I don't go after, I don't go after price. Um, somebody just calls on the phone and is like, hey, how much for this? And it's like, usually there's not a lot there, but it, it kind of depends on the tone and like some of the subtleties. Because there's people that are like have looked me up before that have obviously have a question and want to know how much it is for their car, but it kind of just like there's always tone differences and stuff. I just there's impulsive people that want it done now or or cheaper or whatever, and that's fine. That's what they're looking for. I'm not there to service that. But you know, in a, in a way. I kind of get some phone calls like that. I get people calling and asking about ceramic. And they just look for how cheap can they get ceramic. So it's almost like the same type of question. Like how much, you don't carry Lumar or Expel or, oh, your ceramic is more expensive than this ceramic. It's like, well, you don't even know anything about ceramic. You just know there is ceramic and ceramic is what is toted as the best. But you don't really know why. You just know that it exists, so you want the cheapest version of that. So in a way, it's a similar customer. I had, I had one guy text and apologize for giving me shit on the price after he said, I just remembered it's ceramic. <laughs> well, that was nice of him to apologize. You know, there's definitely, like, there's, there's places for me that are obviously out of my price range. That's just how it goes. So if I were to call somewhere and that place was not in my price range, I would politely say, oh, okay, thank you for the info. I appreciate it. It's just too expensive. Or just say, okay, thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> Getting offended is kind of a funny thing. I can't believe this place is charging what they're charging. Oh, my God. Like, well, you're obviously not their client. That is what it is, and that's okay. Had a customer do Walmart tent himself. You could not see through it. Selling him ceramic was so easy. <laughs> he should have watched my video on that one. I would have saved him 20 bucks in a bunch of time. I had so many people say, oh, you didn't let it dry long enough. 
Oh, I would definitely take the heat rejection. Some people like it that way. Like, I had a bunch of really funny comments on that one. The thing is, I always view, like, tint, first and foremost, should be easy to see through. It just kind of goes with the expected things. So when you have to explain something that's unusual about it, like clarity, I hate that. I just need heat reduction. I don't need to see through it. Okay, put a piece of cardboard up there. It'll probably block out way more heat. It was, it was like looking through milk. I still wanna make that into a video. It was tinning with milk. It's pro I don't know if it would do well though. I gotta think of a better title for it. But the concept is funny. Tinning with actual milk. <laughs> Versus that shit. There we go. My no battery and card is up top. Oh, no way. Huh. Look at you guys. You guys are so unpicky. No, it's part of a, it's the new style now. Hang on, let me get rid of it. Go to that and you do that. There we go. I gotta think of a good title though. That's what's so hard, it's like, if it's a funny idea, I'd figure out how to sell it. Because that won't sell itself. It's like a TikTok punchline. It's not a video. <laughs> Take the door apart so the milk doesn't get nasty. <laughs> An actual concern. I don't know, I gotta figure something out. I like the idea though. I got other ideas to do though. God, I 
I don't know if I wrote down the one yesterday. You could buy a scrap door. <laughs> you guys are way too concerned about my the milk. <laughs> I'd probably still just do it on the blazer. Maybe I'll rinse it down afterwards. It'll be fine. Yeah, I don't let that get in the way. Just do it. Same thing with the classes, stuff like that. It's like, I just, I have these here. I'll just make them work. And if there's something better that we can get for it, then I'll do that. So it'll be fine. We just do the milk. So we're gonna, we're gonna have some more time coming up because I'm gonna have an extra set of hands here. Which will be good. Do you get tired of tinting? Um, yeah, in a way. I think you get tired doing anything though. I don't think there's one thing that you could do every single day without getting completely bored of it eventually. I just don't. I think there's just happy balances to it all. So like, I like doing live streams. Honestly, at this point, if I do live streams every single day, I'll drive myself too crazy. I need a break. I need a break so I can actually like, you know, I, like yesterday, I did a van. I had every opportunity to stream it yesterday, and I didn't. And you know what? I had a great time. I just focused on doing a great job on it, chilled out, played some videos while I was tinting, learning about gimbals and stuff. And then there's other like businessy things that I got to take care of too. So it's like straightening out my tent was proposals, little things like that. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I need those days. RGC super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Morning, the the dude. Oh, I'm the dude. You know, that makes sense from your last super chat. Thank you. RGC with the five. Morning, the dude. I am the dude. That's a uh, big Lebowski reference, right? The most famous, the dude. Yes, you get tired of doing anything. <laughs> so if I, if I wasn't streaming at all, I'd miss it. I'd like, oh, I gotta stream. Like every few days that I don't, I'm like, man, I, get, I wanna do another one. I just, it's, if it's every day of the week, all week, It becomes a job. And it's it's part of my job, but it's not my whole job. It's nice to have jobs that I focus on. It's nice to take a break entirely and just like 
make some make some videos. What was the other stuff? Uh, oh yeah, and then the classes. Like I'd run the classes like every other week. It's just kind of a lot to run one of them. So I do them once a month. And they're good fun, three days. And I do one the next month. So we've got a pretty good, pretty good system right now. I'm like super businessy now too, cause I just hired somebody. <laughs> I've never hired anybody in my life. <laughs> So, I, I have a, a situation. Sun Distributing wants, wants to order um, a bunch of glass aid rolls again. They ran out. And here's, here's my, my problem. I can't run out there. Like, and I gotta pick up stuff for the class. But I have appointments here. I have appointments here scheduled Monday, uh, this Saturday, and today. And so they're closed on Saturday anyways. So I can't get out there today. And so I couldn't get out there tomorrow. The only day that I could get out there would be Monday. But the new guy comes in on Monday and I also have an appointment. So we're gonna have the new guy. He's gonna pack up the rolls. He's gonna take them out there. And then he's gonna bring back all the stuff for the classes. Bippity boppity. Easy peasy. See? Look at how helpful that is now. Now I'm freeing up time so I can do something else. I'm happy. <laughs> Where every other month it's been a crisis. Please strap a GoPro to the new guy. What, and then I can have two perspectives? So you can have two people walking around with GoPros? Like that's your job is just follow me around and then we have like two perspectives on it? How much is his paycheck? Wow, we're just going straight to it, aren't we? Uh, we're starting him out at 15 an hour. He's not signed on to uh, just be a tinter. But, so here's, here's how we're gonna solve this. And I told him right from the beginning. So he was looking into um, possibly tinting, automotive stuff, vinyl. And so he just started, he called a couple of shops. But what this place has is diversity. So what I told him is like, your, your goal here is to save time. The more time we save, the more opportunities there are for teaching and for other stuff. So you will be in charge of putting uh, orders together and shipping them. You'll be in charge of answering phone calls. And to be honest, like how many times has my phone rang since this stream started? Once? Like, so it's not off the hook every day, but then it, it does get busy here or there. So all those little things, like, they add up. But if one person's focused on it, it doesn't take all that long. And then from there, it's like, okay, then we can start working on another program and getting you up to speed on something else and another way to make more money. That's how that's going to work. That's, that's the only way that I can make it work. You save me lots of time which will save, which will free up time for you too. Cause it's one person doing everything. Now it's conquered by two people. Duh, that's why you hire people. And then it's a, then it's a natural fit. So he's not looking for anything crazy right now. He's just looking for a job, so. I think I'm the only one to take older cars, 2010 around me. I have an 06 Jag, 05 BMW, 06 Cadillac DTS. <laughs> nice.
I am with retirement. <laughs> you guys expect too much from me. I've worked for a lot of different places. And I can tell you, most places, dude, they just hand you a paycheck. And when you don't show up, you don't get paid. Sick days, what's that? <laughs> that? They'll give you a sick day. They just won't pay you. Like, yeah, you're in the wrong field if you want all types of benefits on top of it. But here's the thing. Obviously, I wanted him to do well, too. But I, yeah, the way that that's gonna work is baby steps. There's like, look, it's quiet. I can handle everything myself here. So having another person that can now free up extra time, what do you think that's gonna do for him? That's gonna free up opportunity to then, we'll put out more video. Maybe he'll get into editing, I don't know. But mostly like holding a camera and then like he needs other stuff to do. So it's like just being around here, he's gonna learn a ton. But it's cool that there's enough here. That's that's when I figure I hire somebody. When there's too much for you to do and you your time would be better off doing more of what you do best, that's when you hire somebody to take care of all the rest of this stuff. But I got lucky. He just kind of showed up out of nowhere. Perfect. And so it wasn't too much effort. But who knows? We'll see how it works out. That's another thing entirely. Tell the new guy to turn off that noise. <laughs> I like that noise. You guys get to hear it for the entire door window. Then it'll be off. Time to open up 12 new locations. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, no. That would be... That would be so much extra work. No, thank you. Expand more locations. Yeah, no. Can I just enjoy here? So if I was like a crazy workaholic, this place would be different. It's it's not set up to be that. Set set up so I can take my sweet ass time on the car that I have right here and slowly grow as it makes sense. <laughs> Get rich quickly. Or like amount lots and lots of debt very quickly. <laughs> Intense student in every city. 
We're gonna be like, uh, no, we gotta open up like waffle houses. There's just gonna be one off of every freeway. You get a tent studio, and you get a tent studio. And then we're gonna offer tent prime, as my brother would say. Window tent prime. <laughs> So, but I like that there's, there's opportunity. Cause it, it's honestly, it's a tough thing for a shop to, to figure out and make happen. Cause I can do everything. So obviously like the first things that'll save me time that's easiest for somebody to do is answer phones. But I, I have the benefit of also needing to fulfill orders, so that's something extra that helps everything out that you can do. Very quick and easy to teach somebody to do that. That frees up a bunch of my time. And then, you know, if I can trust him on, you know, start teaching him like little things, right? Like, oh, I got somebody that wants to get an extra set of door windows. Yeah, sure, bring it in. Teach him how to do those. And then before you know it, he's making commission off of doing extra front doors. You guys can prep mm -hmm. for, for a regular shop. It makes all the sense in the world. So here it doesn't make quite as much sense, which is extra. Like I, I'm in a weird position. So I'm like, one unfortunate thing is like, I can't teach somebody in person while I'm streaming it. We could like do a lesson on a back window or something like that. You know what I mean? Like little things. So you guys could see like how he does stuff and how I'd correct it. Like little things like that. But as far as like, oh yeah, you're gonna do that side of the car. I'm gonna do this side of the car. We're gonna knock it out in an hour. That's not gonna happen. This is the wrong cup. That's the right cup. Is, Alex, is Lex in a good place to get film and tools? Um, it wouldn't be my first choice for, uh, for film, no. They get recommended an awful lot. I should just embrace that. <laughs> you guys wanna see me go true evil? Tint Depot. Sun Distributing. Tint Stuff. Those places. You can get film at any one of those places. It's... So I, I'm, I'm always hesitant to mention it as a whole. I always gotta give this disclaimer. If you go for the budget carbon from them, it's gonna give you quite a hassle shrinking, but cutting door windows, that type of stuff should be pretty easy to handle. So it's like, yes, you can, but then you're gonna jump into back windows and then you're just gonna get completely screwed and you're not gonna understand what's going on. So that's why it's kind of like, it'd be weird to buy that for doors and something else for something, or for just shrinking. It shrinks like cardboard. It shrinks like cardboard, I like that. You know, I got a class coming up next week. I got those Amazon blades. 
I guess I could do some test cuts there, but I I want to use it on a car, so I'd probably just try them on the Ultima, see how those work. They're like five bucks a pack. Um, they honestly don't feel as sharp, just right out of the box. But they, I think they're probably better made than the real cheapo $10 stainless packs, the yellow ones. Those ones are just certified garbage. Oh, why are you calling now? Oh, that was quick. I'm expecting that to come back to haunt me in about two seconds. Cool. Okay, so new guy's not here today. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? Hey, what's up? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, good. <laughs> no. Oh, for sure. No, no, no. I, I totally, I totally understand the concern. I, I, that's why it's like, it, it took me by surprise this morning because I haven't heard of that. Like, it hasn't happened yet. But yeah, like you said, it, it, like it does. Something does happen, especially, um, you know, it, it's a smaller independent business. Like, I, I don't know any any number of things. So yeah, I'm I'm super. Right, right. Better, better to catch something sooner than later. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it's all being sorted out. I, I, I hate that something like that happened initially, but it's, I'm glad to know that that you're gonna get that back. So. Yeah, that's that's definitely a kind of that's definitely a scary thing to run into, especially because they're they're a pretty decent sized bank from what I hear. So, I know. Then you start getting hit with like, yeah. It's a, it is a big thing to happen all of a sudden, so, but yeah, all right. I'm glad it's getting sorted out. Thank you so much for following up with me about it. Well, I, I definitely appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. All right, see ya. You have a good one, too. Okay, cool. Yay. Fire number one is completely extinguished. <laughs> so I got a phone call this morning. It was from the job that I did yesterday. Um, apparently, his bank having some issues so on my end everything looked normal on his end he got um 
He's saying that he had other problems randomly too these past couple months, which is odd. Thanks. Mm. Um, the uh, they ended up double charging him, and I'm looking at my end, going like, uh, it doesn't say, and there's not any additional funds as far as I can tell. But that's super weird. So I thought at first maybe it's a, a credit card thing. Turns out the bank just decided to charge him the exact same amount twice. Um, well, and, and like keep it? <laughs> I don't know. They're like, oh yeah, other people have been having the same problem. We'll, we'll refund it and whatever. But like if you didn't catch it, ugh. So yeah, that was, that's like really, really scary. The good news is that it was a previous client, so it just, you know, Little, little scary for sure. I don't like to see that happen to anybody. So, good. Getting cleared up. Everything should be fine. Joy. Okay, so, uh, and with that, we're, uh, we got the doors all set. is it? I can't read this. Yeah, it's 12. Okay, so we got quarter windows to do, and we got a back window to do. Um, where's my roll? We are going to cut this and put it in. Charge me twice. I'm rich. <laughs> SunTech scratches easily. I've heard that. I've heard that about Lumar and Suntech. See, that's where you need like a good, I mean, I, obviously you don't want that to happen with any film. But like that was especially, that's especially disheartening when you have a film, um, you get everything installed and you're all happy about it and you notice one of those like hairline scratches that goes like through the whole thing and it was from like a squeegee or whatnot, but it's because it's got a really sensitive scratch coat. Like how are you supposed to even work with that? And then if it's scratching easily and you're applying it to the car, doesn't that mean that the seals are eventually gonna scratch it up too? So it's not gonna last. You can put your own voice on the, what? You can put your own voice on the income sound and explain previously your price politics, avoid strange calls. What? Can you reword that? I don't understand. What about stickers on the back window people have? Should you shrink over that? Yeah. So if you have like some vinyl lettering, um, anything like that, you can shrink right over it. You don't have to remove it. Um, some people put like, you know, a band sticker, or bumper sticker, something along that. Um, it, it will kind of make it a little bit weird in that section. Like not, like just how it looks like when you're shrinking it. Sometimes little like fingers will kind of jut up a little bit. Um, but you can usually hold it, smooth it down, and, and even if there's something small there, it's not gonna hurt the inside of the glass. So you should be fine. If it's something that's been bedazzled, then that needs to be removed. Something that's more than a, like a, a vinyl letter, which is pretty much all people have, or a sticker, anything more than that, yeah, it'd, it'd probably be a problem. Is the windshield on the CT5 hard? I have one tomorrow. Uh, no, this one actually is all very straightforward. Seals are, are pretty, pretty normal. Um, all the cuts and shrinking, pretty straightforward. This back glass is, is reasonably flat, so there isn't gonna be a whole lot of shrinking here. Let's see. Oh yeah, and when you're cutting out stickers and stuff, um, there's two ways that I handle it. Glass Aid is obviously awesome. RTC super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. 
Thanks, Tint Dude. Super Chat? RGC, thank you again for another five. Thanks, Tint, tint Dude. <laughs> You're welcome, man. Thank you so much for another five. I really appreciate that. Okay, so if you're cutting over vinyl lettering, um, glass aid's good. Just still be careful. Uh, but glass aid helps with something like that. And then also, you don't have to necessarily cut through the film. You could basically, like where that sticker is, you could lightly drag a blade or use a marker and just mark where you need to cut, take it elsewhere, and then make that cut. Gets a little tricky when it's like windshield lettering. You don't necessarily want to just remove the whole windshield and try and take it to a different surface. So glass, glass aids a little bit faster for something like that. Um, or you could drag a button through it. That's also a decent way to do it. But yeah, you can do some stuff to avoid cutting on it altogether. Or scissors. Maybe scissors could work for you. Scissors can be a little tricky to round tight corners and stuff. And you like keeping everything close, but not a bad option either. Knives are just good because you have the film right against where you need to cut. So you're, you're visually seeing exactly where you want to cut it as you're cutting it. Anytime you got to put something, um, you got to move it out of the way or whatnot. Leaves room for questions. Glass aid's a good invention. <laughs> Thanks. Did you buy the dustbin? Amazon? I bought two of them for a small garage, and now I have a big garage. And they don't need small dustbins. I should do something else, though. It's one of those things that don't get fixed. Yeah, Sharpies are good. So you'll draw on the film. You mark out your line. Where it differs, let me show you. So if I didn't want to take a blade to it at all, I would take a, um, I would take a light and I would take a Sharpie. I would take that light, it's dead. Let me plug this guy in. I would take that light, I would shine it through the film, reflect it off the dash or off the deck lid, try and get exactly where I need it to be. Something, something wrong, something funky, this light. I don't think it's the connector. Oh, it could be the connector on the thing. That's goofy. It's supposed to be red. Oh, oh, oh. I don't think we're gonna get it. Ooh. Oh, ha! No, don't move. It's red. That means it's charging. Oh, where's my other ones? They're around here somewhere. Shows you last I used a light. It's been a minute since somebody's had limo. I don't know, things got cleaned up. Things get moved. I'll find it. Anyways, so I'll take a light. I'll shine a light, reflect it off the deck, and then I can brighten up the dots so I can usually see. Limo makes it 
challenging to see though, so generally you have to like lift it up and make your cut. Um, but if you don't want to use a blade, then you'll take a Sharpie and you'll kind of figure out where that dot matrix is and you just mark all the way around. But then you have to take it, move it somewhere else, and cut it. Or you can take a hard piece of plastic, like a shirt button, is what most people uh, would do. Um, but for example, you would take that, um, or a tool or something, you'd slide it under the film, dig that blade into that little plastic piece, and then drag that all the way around. And that'll keep the blade from touching the glass. That is totally personal preference. So you'll see, I will cut in the directions that's most comfortable for me. So I'll, do a, I'll start in the top, work around this way, start in the bottom, work back over. With a piece of plastic or something, you're gonna have to kind of just do one, train yourself to do one continuous cut all the way around. It starts to get weird for like corridor windows and stuff as well. So it's up to you, but there's definitely ways, ways around using it. But yeah, I'm a fan. Because, I mean, I come from a very mobile background before I had this shop. And I feel like a lot of people, that's kind of like where you start. So it got really frustrating because if I went to a nice auto shop, maybe they would have space and a de dedicated cutting spot where you could set things up more professionally. But there were many, many auto garages that I walked into and do they just got shit piled up from years and years. And so they'll, they'll kick you over to a bay where you can open a couple of the doors, hopefully all of them. But they don't give you a lot to go off of. So even this amount of space in somebody else's garage or shop is kind of rare. <laughs> so what I always could rely on was the car. The space might change, but what I can rely on is the tools that I bring, and the car always has glass for me to tint. So I use that. I can, I can take care of everything without needing anything else. Do you have a link for your dustbin or trash can at Amazon? Uh, no. <laughs> um, it's just a little small. I, I don't even know the name of it. It's just, oh, Echo, E-K-O is the brand. So just search E-K-O trash can. I like that it had separate bins. So my idea was I was going to put rags into one and then the trash into the other. What I actually do is just shove trash into it. And then eventually I empty it. That's it. And then it just fills up way too fast. It's, it's bad. It's bad for what I do here. So I just need to get some bigger ones. I haven't, I don't, I never think about it though. That's why it never gets fixed. All right, so we got a backlast to install, and we got a couple quarter windows to do. I was trying this thing out yesterday. So I have the scrub it paddle, and I took the pad off of it. And what I like is that I can stick a clay bar to it, <laughs> and then I have some extra support while I'm scrubbing out a back window. So I've been doing this for a little bit. Um, but if you leave this on here overnight, it'll stick pretty aggressively, but it, it actually didn't leave hardly anything behind. You just, it took me a little bit to, to wrench it off of here. So 
That was kind of helpful. Because the clay bars are already kind of hard, so they hold together really well. But I think they need some type of support. It, it would help a lot. I thought you were going to say land down under. Do you cut on the white tape or beside it? Oh, I cut on it. So this is the, most people think right off the bat that it's a way for me to see what I'm cutting. That's a part of it. It's real help is to protect the glass. So I can put a piece of film there, I can shine a light through it and I can cut it out relatively quickly. I don't need anything in between there. Um, but it does help with seeing, but there's always that annoying application time. So really, the time that I'd use rearranging a light, um, I spend mapping the whole thing out. But once I have the tape there, then I put the film over it, I shrink it, and then I cut in the middle of that line all the way around, and it keeps the blade off the glass. Because the last thing I want to do is score any windows on a client's vehicle, because whatever the cost of that to replace, um, nowadays it's likely to be more than the, uh, the cost of the tin job. Especially when it comes to windshields. Windshields are like my biggest. We got a couple, we got a couple things we gotta, we gotta have to move here. When you push water out, let's put those there. Here, we're gonna put this up here. When you push water out, how much pressure? Medium pressure? <laughs> it's a hard thing for me to for me to describe. You don't have to put a ton of pressure on it. Oh, these are those, I gotta get my keys. I have a thing that'll help take that out. So you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. Um, but you can put a decent amount of pressure to get extra water out. Let's see, this guy, little, little tick tick screwdriver here. It stayed on my keys forever. And sometimes it's a little annoying, kind of just depends on the one that you get, but there's a little pinhole here. You press that in and then it will allow you to pop out the headrest. So it's not quite as friendly on Audis. Having those little hook tools would be better. I always misplace those. But one thing that always sticks with me is a Tech Deck screwdriver on my keys. So if I'm ever in a pinch, you just do that, poke that, and there you go. Boom, pop right out. Hey bro, I learned so much from you. Cool, I appreciate it. All right. So we're clearing some stuff out of the way. I'm gonna throw a towel up here. We're gonna install this back window and then we'll do those quarters. Do those quarters last. Just cause we're, we're already moving in on this. I second that. My whole career started because of this man. <laughs> Damn. Thank you. That's a lot. All right, where'd I put it? Probably here. This, which I already thought I had in there, I don't. Oh yeah, and then this guy. Same here, I don't think I would've tried if it wasn't for Matt's channel. Aw, you guys. That's, it's very nice and kind of crazy to hear that. Because for the longest time, I mean, where this channel started, I'm just doing, doing my job. <laughs> but then later on, I would get emails from people um, asking questions and then eventually like, hey, I actually have like a business because of your channel. And that was, that's a crazy crazy realization there. So it's a big reason why I still 
enjoy doing it. I mean, every once in a while, I think I should just make meme videos. Honestly, maybe should make it as a support. <laughs> I just need a theme to stick with, because I get, I get some random ideas, but starting a new channel is kind of a lot. But what I like about this one... is just, like, there's opportunity here. You can take everything that you learn and you can make money on the weekend with it. You can turn it into a career, whatever you want to do with it. It's just an option that exists. go get ready to put this in here all right take it take it back a little on this one it is a pretty straightforward one to shrink I'm looking at it they don't give you a ton of room to work with though it's not bad there's just not a lot of room how long do you tint like how long have I been tinting for I think 15 years now I've only had a shop for a couple of years. Seen reverse roll. Unroll it two thirds and then lift it up on the glass. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm, I'm way too far down doing things this way. I think it makes sense, and when you train that way from the beginning, you probably get pretty damn good at making that happen. What I like about this way is you just gotta learn how to handle film, and it's already unrolled, ready to go. So then you're, it's, it's quick. It's quick and very clean. You just put it exactly where it needs to go. There's no peeling it back, rolling it up. But when you talk about an oversized piece of glass, like a full front windshield, you're dealing with a much, much different animal. Where doing this, I've learned, is very inconsistent for me, unless I've got an extra set of hands. So if I have some, even then it, it's tricky because one person picking it up, carrying it in, and then the other person is kind of there as support to help put that film, film on the glass. So I've got really accustomed to reverse rolling windshield, which actually have some added room where these back glasses, you're kind of, tucking like you're tinting them into like a little cavern here so that's why i like to just peel the whole thing carry it in and then you kind of just like i don't know you just like coast it in here when you need to speed up your workflow this is a fast way to do it. Just don't, you learn the tent limbo. Just don't bump it on panels and stuff. It's not that, it's not that hard in most cases. Just might seem a little chaotic at the beginning.
Uh, all right for long arms humans. <laughs> nope. Seen short tenors do it too. Yeah, that doesn't make it easier. But honestly, you got some advantages because you can fit into some tighter back seats. But I've seen all types of tenors do it this way. But yeah, the two good ways to learn is reverse rolling. I do that on windshields, and then I carry in all my back windows like this. We call it the Frankenstein, or the zombie. I always thought those names were a little silly, but I understand. I'm going to grab a couple of things. I'm going to take this out of here. Ooh, sounds like they're... Sounds like they're emptying some dumpsters. Dudes, they cleaned up my parking lot. I'm happy. There's like some landscape guys that came in, chopped up a bunch of tree limbs and stuff, and they just left it sitting in my parking lot. And they didn't say anything about it. And I'm like, uh, I'm assuming that's gonna get taken care of. But I'm kind of at my, kind of at my end, because I've had so much random crap put in my parking spots that's been there for literally months. I've it's been like the biggest, one of the biggest annoyances about this whole place. One day I'll pull up here and there'll be some like random shelving or tables or a grocery cart pusher. So, but it's all cleared now. They actually like cleaned everything and threw out all the trash. And I did keep the grocery cart though. So I got a grocery cart over there. Mine. Your opinion about bottom loading? Um, it's it's a great way to tin a car. It's very popular. It's just not the way I do things in most cases. I did one yesterday. You guys would be proud. Of course, that was one I didn't go live on. So I had a caravan. No, no, no. It wasn't caravan. It was a Pacifica. And the sliding rear doors have hardware that's in the way. And I got used to doing um, the Dodge Caravan. Um, I got used to doing that one without pulling the seals, but I wasn't always, like, it's not fun. But I pulled the seal on the Pacifica. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? Yeah, Subaru Debra X. Did you want to do all the sides in the back uh, and add a windshield or do the whole thing without the windshield? Uh, without the windshield, we'll start at 290. That would be in a color stable dyed film with a lifetime warranty. We do carry carbon and ceramic films if you're interested in some additional heat protection, uh, but it would start at 290. Uh, fifteen percent ceramic tint. That would be uh, four fifty for all the sides in the rear. Okay. Have a good one. <laughs> That's like one of those Lumar calls. All right. I'll stop in soon. <laughs> No, you won't. I know that call. 2004 WRX, which has the possibility of actually scheduling because it's a WRX, but there's still a lot of them that are getting an, a WRX that old because they're trying to save money. <laughs> Which was the case there.
Yeah, I was looking for 15% ceramic. Oh. Well, you should have led with, I'm looking for ceramic. It's okay, times are tough. Um, bulldozer's getting some action. Yeah, so I was trying to handle everything with the side swipe. The deck lid presses a little bit. Sorry, this is up from that, that back window. Let's do that. So the, uh, the deck lid presses a little close. So the thickness of this plastic just kind of butts up against that. So I couldn't squeegee everything down. So my next tool that I'm going to go to, believe it or not, is a bulldozer. It's a little bit slimmer. Flexes, gets in that. Does a great job of pushing out more water, um, where that tail fin is kind of like a, a good third try. So snuck in really, really good along that bottom edge. I'm happy with it. Turned out nice. I felt something hit my shoe. I think I dropped something. So we're gonna clean this up. We gotta do the quarter windows. What dropped? <gasps> my shank. Do that one more time. But yeah, I always do these in stages. Something like this, um, where you can't quite see the dots at the bottom, you're usually gonna have to use a, um, a big paddle tool or something a little bit different to just make sure you get everything down there. Nice. Looks good. Okay. And then we got to do quarter windows. Let's mask off. Let's mask off the quarters. Since we're not going to be plotting them today. Tips on running two businesses at once. <laughs> Which one pays more? <laughs> what business is it? kind of a broad question focus on the one with more potential I, I like it's probably not it's probably not that simple but My focus used to be split a lot. <laughs> Get a good manager that you can trust. I have a business where I sell. What do you sell? Doing business consulting now. <laughs> Did the Grand Cherokee fat percent of the front's 20 over the factory. Turned out great. Now she wants darker. <laughs> really? That's always an interesting situation to, to get in. I feel bad. If somebody gets their whole car tinted and then they want to go darker after the fact, if, I'd feel bad. But... If they're like, yeah, that's fine, then hey, all right, cool. So I started 
Tinting, but I have another small business where I sell fries from home. About 3K local followers come often promoting my tint page through that business since they already trust me. Sell fries. Like French fries? Like hand cut home fried fries? Damn, that sounds yummy right now. I gotcha. So how do you run that and a tent business? Um, in that case, probably find somebody that can, uh, that can fry some fries. McDonald's figured out how to do it. Chili cheese fries, god damn, I'm hungry now. My wife made some good food yesterday and I was stuck here. I was gonna leave, so it was dropped off early in the morning and then he was picking it up later in the afternoon. I finished it like mid-afternoon and I was gonna leave and go pick it up and that's when I got a phone call saying he'd be there in an hour and I was like, God damn it. I had to turn around. Damn, I'm hungry now. <sighs> Tint and fries. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm thinking, that's the thing, I'm thinking. You can merge them. So if you're doing it all for, or like are you tinting, is it like you're tinting from home and you can't stay on top of, of doing the fries? Pre-recorded stream. That's right. I know that. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. Think, think, use your brain. It's this way. I'm gonna shrink this the wrong way if I'm not careful. Use your brain, use your brain. There we go, that's better. Because, yeah, it's uh it's an interesting question for sure. It's hard to just give a blanket response. So I'm trying to figure out what as much as I can. Because it's interesting. You you have like a way that people are coming to you already. And those people are coming for fries. Doesn't mean that they don't have cars and might, you know, they trust you for fries. It's not, it, it's a stretch for window tinting, obviously. So it's like, you're not gonna come in and like, oh, I want fries and window tint. But it's a good way to like get your name out there, right? Any other business that you're doing, it's kind of a, a nice thing. Tinting, I'm just assuming, has more growth potential than the fry thing, but the fry thing makes money. Pay somebody to handle the fries while you're tinting, but I would do it in a way where you still have oversight on what's going on. So like, you're there, you're tinting, but it's all kind of like happening in the same area. <laughs> Free large fry with the tint job. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All those little extras is like a nice thing. I, I would just ask, like, they're there for a tin job, like, hey, you want some fries, man? <laughs> but if, like, if they're essentially happening from the same place, then you can, you can handle both. You just need an extra set of hands to help with that. The tint business is evolving. Well, what I, so what I really like about that is like, you can find complementary businesses and ways to stack things together that just like, you don't need to separate them. You don't need to like completely move it necessarily. Like if there, but like if you were somewhere with a lot of foot traffic, you know, that was pulling in 
just a lot of like that's what that business is tailored for, right? But you're doing it from home. So you don't really have like a s established stand somewhere in a mall or on a boardwalk or something. Oh, why did I do that? Hang on. I'm getting ahead of myself. You get what I mean? So like if you can kind of merge the two together a little bit, find an extra set of hands that can that can take care of the fries and then you worry about the tinting part, then you get both. Ceramic napkins. Use the fry warmer heat lamp to demo your film. <laughs> I'm kind of memeing about, about all the uh, the combos. Coney tip, not cone tip. In that, in that establishment, there's a coney tip. So like one of the things that I obviously did here is like, and I, I take very seriously, is trying to figure out how to stack stack a business together, which is one reason like the things with the channel and the store. That's been a big that's been a big help. <laughs> I think I gotta recut this one. Just a little bit smaller. Yep, let me do this a little bit smaller. There's just a couple little spots here that it's tough. This is an interesting seal here. <sighs> All right, let me, let me do this one more time. Plotter. Not a bad idea. What 20? No, I don't have a short roll. I'm just gonna cut this out again. Guy's whipping out the plotter. My dumb self doesn't have a short roll. So I'm just gonna recut it. I just cut it a little bit on the on the large size. And it should be a medium. Should I advertise? Hmm. I'd say use it to your advantage. Just do it. They're unrelated. But like it, if people are like coming to your house to get fries, it's still like a little bit more personalized. So they just like appreciate you and what you do. So that, that kind of changes, that changes things a little bit. It's definitely not gonna hurt to just try. It's not gonna like ruin your page or anything. I mean, the thing about, often the thing about um, Facebook pages anyways is like, there's a lot that doesn't get shown to the people that even like your business anyways. It's all about how engaging a particular post is or how much you pay to promote it on Facebook. So it's not gonna hurt anything, not at all. So yeah, I'd take advantage of it. See if it, it can drum up some extra business and stuff. I really like, I would love to figure out an extra business that a tint shop could be that just makes sense for everybody. 
or something additional that you can like there's there's some additional things that you can offer your clients that are coming in and whatnot the natural thing is to to do like other automotive services glass repair glass replacement uh vinyl paint protection film like other associated auto businesses because you're already pulling in cars so whatever else you can add to that can definitely be can be helpful selling food is a bitch <laughs> sounds like it Yeah, exactly. Like tires, like there's lots of, lots of automotive shops that look to offer window tinting. Window tinting can just be like such a big thing on its own. But I appreciate the fry hustle there. I think that's cool. It's just something that like stirs up an interesting conversation too. Like ugh, I got the best fries at my tent place. And they're like, wait, what? In this day and age, you have to diversify on some level. But yeah, good topic. Yeah, um, so I've got a, why I didn't do a plotter. I don't have a, like a great answer for you guys. I just, sometimes I like to, like, I do a lot of hatches with the plotter. So I just figured I'd mix it up a little bit with, uh, with hand cutting the quarters out. I didn't think this one was gonna, gonna trip me up at all though. But it did. Like I said, I just had it cut a little bit on the big side. RGC super shattered for dollars ninety nine cents. Here's Tintude's first order chili cheese fries with potatoes on top. Uh, you don't like? Or no, 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 RGC with the five. Here's Tint Dude's first order chili cheese fries with potatoes on top. RGC, thank you for the five. I appreciate that. Oh, you don't like platters quit being nice for sponsors? <laughs> nope. I told them right from the beginning how it was going to be, and it's stuck exactly to that. I don't use it for doors. I don't sugarcoat it. We have lots of issues that you guys get to see firsthand. When I'm in a, a high production environment, you better believe we were using the plotter. But it makes, to me, it makes the most amount of sense when you have somebody that can run it and can handle it. So other than that, it's like trying to handle an employee that can only half cut out some windows when it doesn't work right, and then you're always trying to make up for them. But if you have somebody that can run it, it makes more sense. I'm not sold on the plotter at all. Yeah, I don't think your business is tailored for it. Like, for the quarter windows, back windows, truck back windows, yeah, it saves me some time, but I was doing fine without it before. I just make, sh make it a point now to at least, like, use it when I have an advantage to using it. I got so many questions about how do they work? 
more info about it. And I'd be dumb at that point if we never explored what it's like to fit a plotter into your business. It's just, that's, that's a big part of this channel. It's like, not just talk about it, but actually fitting differences into your business. But if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. This is where like, yeah, I found where it can work. Is it the be all end all for my business? No. No, and if you're just a one person operation, is it gonna be a huge benefit to your business? No, not really. It's gonna be okay. But if you're getting some more cars in, you're looking to speed up, it can definitely help out. Lots of shops use them, lots of shops like them. I'm just kind of like a weird, weirdo. <laughs> with some of this. Kevin uses it on everything. Well, that's fine. That's his business. He likes using it. I've seen lots of people use it on, on everything. The point is to make your, your customers happy. And if his customers are happy with the work that he's giving, then he's doing everything that he needs to do. We talk a lot about the little particulars, and I think that's helped get some unique business here. But it definitely, I can, I can tell you 100%, it's not as big of a deal. There's lots of things that you can kind of sneak. It doesn't mean you're putting out a bad job. It's just like, Okay, when we're talking about like getting 99% there versus getting as 100% as you can be, you know, if you want to keep your prices in a certain spot, then you need more volume. Plotter is one way to help keep up that volume. But I also think it's important to not show always just the easy route because there's so many people that are watching that, that don't have a plotter. So I like trying to teach a really broad application for people. Who would have thought selling french fries from home? Hey man. There's lots of unique things out there. Sounds delicious to me. It's lunchtime. I like fries. So does my son. <laughs> it's like one of the consistent foods. Chicken nuggies and fries. If he's not feeling some foods that we're trying to give him, I've never seen him turn away a french fry. <laughs> I like patterns to fit. I do too. And a good amount of plotter patterns can be fine. It's just if you're trying to do that, you know, how close to a top edge contest that I can get, plotter's not gonna quite be there. But it's gonna be, you know, if the patterns are good, it's gonna be pretty close. I've been overall happy um, with film cut, but I, I don't have a lot of opportunities to show you guys the differences with all the cars that I bring in because a lot of the time goes into just prepping, hand cutting and installing. And at that point, you know, especially if somebody's waiting, I don't want to use their car as a demo. Wow. I literally put that in the exact same place. And then I found out where I put the other rolls by doing that. <laughs> of course I did.
<laughs> I'm the potato master. Oh yeah, I gotta do this one little thing here. No, I honestly, so I never quite figured out what that should be, but when I when we first started at my dad's shop, we had six thousand okay, not first started. When we he had one company, it was going out of business, and then he start like that that business had accumulated too much debt. It was an alarm, remote starter company. Um, they did lots of accessories. They ordered a ton of product. They had unsuccessful stores when the economy started to take a turn. Lots of debt piled up. It made that business unsustainable at that point. So then he canned that business and then started a new company, and that's the tin shop that's running today. And they're doing that successfully. They still do some of the things that they used to do as far as accessories and starters and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the money right there. Boom. And you have it just sized right. Just sneaks into that side seal. Perfect. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so he had six thousand. He has six thousand square feet to play around with. And when we opened up that place, I am the tinter. <laughs> That's it. It was me. It was another sales guy that carried over from the other stores, and then eventually he left. And then it was pretty much like me, my dad, and maybe one other person at the time. 6,000 square foot building. We don't need 6,000 square feet of space. And I made that abundantly clear for a while. I was like, why do you need a space this big? And he talked a big program. I slogged that place for a long time. <laughs> and to be honest, it's just starting to pay off in the recent handful of years. I'm gonna redo this one. It's the right size. There's just a couple, a couple little bigger specs there, and I can make this look better. So I'm gonna recut this one one more time. So you don't need a big space. Shit, you don't even need a real commercial space really to make good money doing it. But I always thought being in a space like that, you need other other avenues of money. And I always would like there to be a pretty, I wish there was like a very straightforward way to do this, where you could tell like, you know, people get into completely different businesses. So like they'll do window film and then they'll do vinyl. It's a completely different skill set, and it's not an easy thing to teach. So you kind of work yourself into like a similar corner. When it's working really well, it's going great, but you have two different types of customers to attract. It would be really nice if you can, if there was more complementary businesses to it that you could just like offer that wasn't a headache and a half to run. Then it would make opening up a tin shop so much easier, so much more viable because it's a big scary thing to do. And you're like, ah, if I don't have enough cars to tint, what am I gonna do? Well, that's where a secondary income with that space then 
makes you not have to worry about getting that space. So I'm always looking out for something like that. I hope I cut this out right. Mm, yes, I did. Okay, cool. <laughs> Bitcoin farm in the tin shop. It's taking a dive right now. But there might be something there. I don't know enough about it. So I just know it's everything's kind of taking a dive right now. But yeah, it would be great if there was like a surefire thing. Paint correction, ceramic coatings, and scratch repair to fill the empty voids. That's good. I can appreciate that a lot. So you know how, like... So this was, like, for a short period of time. But you know how, like, T-Mobile... Oh, no, 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 Sprint teamed up with like Radio Shack to get a, like a lot more stores very quickly. I don't think it worked out. But Radio Shack needed some, something to hang on to. So that's what they kind of did. They wanted something that like is pretty easy to find somebody to help and just extra money that you can bring in with not a lot of skill that's kind of like complimentary. But that's good. Like Doing extra skill sets that help diversify your business is always a good thing. Just have a way to grow those as they start to pick up traction. So that's why I've never gotten into, uh, into vinyl uh, at scale. Like I, I've never wanted to do lots of hood wraps and stuff like that. Because then I got to build a vinyl business and I got to find a vinyl guy. I could handle it while it's slow, and then maybe there's enough people around that, yeah, it's not so hard to do. I was just thinking, I wonder if it would be a good complimentary one. But that's why I was looking at ceramic coatings the other day, so I think that one's, like, okay. It's a nice add-on to a car that's already coming in. Ooh, better. <laughs> I wrapped my MX-5. <laughs> Too much work. <laughs> That's how I felt. That's how I felt about uh, paint protection film. I did it for a time. It's just, it's big projects. Big dollars, big projects. Um, and so window tinting, less money per job, more jobs, more people inquiring about it. Paint protection film bigger money per job, and you can install window tint on top of it. I would just need somebody else to handle paint protection film, because I can't do both. There's too many tint jobs to do. So, um, I messaged my dad the other day, though, and I was asking him about glass coatings, too, and they're doing the glass parency system, and I know there's lots of people that are not, that are, that are doing it. They're not new to the glass parency thing. This is by no means anything that's brand new. This is just, like, I like to bring these up for anybody that is, uh, new to the business. Um... They're selling windshields for 50, and then they're doing complete vehicles for 150. 
and that's been that's been going very well for them. So that's really cool to hear. It's a really quick, easy thing that you can add on to a job. It's kind of an impulse thing, like, oh yeah, I want my windshield to do it. And for the people that really want to do, like, oh yeah, we can do all the glass too if you want. You're already cleaning it. So it kind of gets back to uh, what I said earlier, like stacking your business. Figuring out some things to do with what's already there, but one way of handling it. It's pretty cool. One thing that, one realization I had way later on Glass transparency. So like uh, ceramic coatings or coatings, hydrophobic coatings for glass. So that one that I mentioned is glass transparency. I'm looking into another one right now, waiting to hear back from them. Um, so basically it's a chemical that you put on the outside of the glass. You clean up the glass, but a chemical on the outside makes the windshield hydrophobic. That's really nice because um, it helps keep your windshield cleaner. All the water beads off your windshield in a really cool way. So as you're driving, it's, it, the water doesn't stick to your window. It hits your glass and then bounces off. So since we're already cleaning glass, it makes a lot of sense to uh, add to a vehicle. I'm working on a display for that. And then when I get some more info about this one that I'm really hyped about, I think, I'll be able to to uh, obviously talk in more detail about it, but just something that, like, when I first, when I started this place, I was, I asked, uh, <laughs> I asked Chicago Auto Pros, I asked Jason, I was like, hey, glass coatings, I want to do those. Do you know any that last that aren't really, like, high maintenance or anything? And he's like, mm, not really. At the time, a couple years ago, I asked him, most would last like up to like seven, eight months, and I just, I didn't like that. But I haven't looked at it since then. So then I, like the other day, I was just looking around. And then I've, I came across one uh, that is soon to launch. Um, that's, uh, from what I understand, it's already proven, but like I said, I, I hardly have any info about it. I just have a sample. I'm going to get some more info about it soon. As soon as they call me back. And then another interesting thing is uh, this other one called Sharp Line that I was looking at. So I'm just, I'm gonna narrow it down to one, I'm gonna pick one, and then I'm gonna set up a display up front, and then I'm gonna start adding that alongside of here. I'm gonna set up a really easy uh, to understand display, a pretty cool display. I got some ideas for it, talked about it a little bit before. Should be fun. Oh, oh, that's the, is that the tag to, we're just, is it? Oh my God, that is, that's the tag to the, to the floor mat. We're just going to leave that there. <laughs> Whew. This looks good. Yeah, buddy. We got the, thanks man, I'm gonna look into that. We got some rain up here in the Pacific Northwest. Or just like ceramic makes a lot of sense to people in hotter states more, you know what I mean? You're just like, oh yeah, it's super hot all the time, right? So you get more inquiries for it. Where it's rainy, you'd probably get a lot more sales for, uh, for something like that too. So it's, it's cool. It's, it's a way to have an easy service that kind of bumps up your final ticket price and just, you know, makes everybody happy. Canon. As someone getting into the tint business, where would you recommend buying uh, bulk tint? Of your tint? Geo Shield? Uh, you can buy it direct from Geo, or you can buy it through my site. It ships from the same place, tint stuff.
Tint stuff. There we go. MyTintStuff.com. Wow. It looks like I got a wig on today. <laughs> uh, or any tint. So Geo, you can find there. Um, Sun Distributing. This is how this works. Watch. Oh, it popped up. And Tint Depot. Ships to Canada. Okay. Uh, Sun Distributing ships to Canada. I don't have my site set up to ship to Canada. Just order direct through Geo. Geo ships direct to Canada. Uh, GeoshieldUSA.com. There you go. I've tried, I've tried dealing with international. It drives me absolutely crazy. I always feel bad because I ship out a package and then it either takes longer. This isn't every time, but more often than not, what's happened is a package takes longer, so then they're wondering where the package is. I don't know. It gets held up in customs. And then what will often happen is USPS will switch uh, the package over to a local post carrier. And so then that post carrier sometimes says, come pick it up from us, which is really weird, and I never know when that's going to happen. So then they think their package got lost. Um, UPS and FedEx, those are better options for that. They have international things. They'll bring it directly to your door, and so should USPS. But um, UPS and FedEx, they're more expensive, and I just don't ship that kind of volume. So that's where, like, yeah, they, 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 they got deals for shipping. They ship lots of big boxes all day, every day. Dang, this thing looks good. So this is, we did 20%. Uh, we did carbon all the way around. Patrick Torch back windows works. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I remember, uh, here, I'll, I'll, I'm going to hop off here in a minute. Yeah, it's like, uh, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the post here. I think I posted on Instagram. This was a while ago. It's when I saw Rick messing around with torches a lot. Maybe it's not on Instagram. Oh, I know what it is. It's on the Tint Stuff one, not the Detroit Tint Studio. There it is. All right, I'm going to find this. Two seconds. Five seconds, 10 seconds. Ah, there it is. Okay. Yeah. This. Let it load. This is Rick doing it on a Malibu. So obviously, this is like an easier demonstration of it. But yeah. The whole torch shrinking on a windshield, you, you don't need to use, like he was saying, you don't need to use a card. Cards for organizing. But this was like such a clean example of it. It's cool. It's nice. It's, so the way to look at it is um, the heat gun does all the work. The card is there to help organize it. So these lines here, it's nice to like, when you push those forward, it kind of shows you where your next spot is to then start shrinking. So I just do both at the same time. And I, I, like, I like the card for bigger uh, curved windows. It just helps me stay organized with it all. So, but yeah, you don't, you don't need, you don't absolutely need a card to do it. You can take it and keep an even, even distance. Just go through it. Watch how the film reacts after you pass over it. But when you get really close with a heat gun, you're kind of like anticipating how much it's already going to shrink. You're not watching it as much. You're just like you're going over it, going through the motions, and then you take a step back and look at how that is. Maybe touch a little bit more up if you have to. Yeah, it's a cool way to do it. 
So it's uh yeah, it is it's it's pretty sweet. I really like that demo. Which brand of Geo would you recommend for starting out? Just get the Pro Classic. That's the, that's gonna be the most economical. Color stable dyed film. Uh, it's a workhorse film. You can put it on all your customer vehicles. They'll be happy with it. Um, it's uh, it's just a hell of a film. And then from there, like if if you're only looking to like you want to start out with something, that's a good place to start. And then when you want to offer a range to your clients, it's good to pick up a carbon line and a ceramic line. And then the higher you go, the more heat rejection that you get. And it's a good way to to make some more money. Tin school is still on for next week. Oh yeah, for sure. If it wasn't, I would panic. I wouldn't let people down like that. So that's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, next week. And should be fun. Should be a lot of fun. Which has more ceram uh, which has more heat rejection, carbon or ceramic? Uh, the ceramic does. Carbon has typically about half as much. So when it comes to like how films are made, most like they're pretty much all polyester, glue, and then you have your uh, you have like what colors it. So if you look at the color, you can color it two ways. You can color it with dye or you can color it with carbon. So those are two ways. So when it comes to ceramic, we'll talk about that. Um, so you got your polyester, you, you got your dye, and you have your coloring. Um, for carbon, the carbon often is the color. It can be part of the color or all of the color. So you can have a carbon dyed hybrid, which is what Avery does, or you can have just pure carbon um, and that will block out more heat uh, than a, okay, so like dye doesn't block out any heat, carbon blocks out some heat, and it depends on how much carbon that you put into that film that it blocks out. So when you go into the lower shades, like 5%, it's gonna block out some additional heat because there's more carbon there. Um, so it'll either be colored with some dye and carbon or just all carbon. And then with ceramic, that blocks out the most amount of heat. The ceramic layer blocks out the most amount of heat, but you have your polyester, you have your dye, or sorry, you have your polyester, uh, your glue, and then you have um, your ceramic, and you need to color it somehow. So the ceramic isn't going to color the film. It, it'll darken up a little bit, but you need to add something to it to get its color. So you will either dye it or you'll add carbon to it. One is not necessarily better than the other. They're just two different ways of doing it. The ceramic is going to block out the most amount of heat, but it allows you to have a very high amount of heat rejection in a light shade so you can stay consistent through your entire lineup. So you can offer something as light as like a 90% and block out a ton of heat. Uh, where, like I said, with carbon, the more carbon that's in it, the more heat that gets blocked out of it. So good, better, best. Dye doesn't really block out any heat at all. Carbon blocks out about half as much in that 20% range, um, at least for the C2 that I installed. And then ceramic blocks out 75 to 95, 99, like depends on the ceramic range that you go with. So it, there's very like clear upsides. And, and, gen, and the pricing falls in line with that too, which is really interesting is Carbon is a very economical way of still tinting a car. It just gives you more color stability and it adds that heat rejection. So it's a better film, uh, which is why you charge more for it. But it's still like, it's nice because it's, it's that incremental. Dye, it's the simplest to make. Carbon, next up. And then you have your uh, ceramic line, which is the most difficult to make. And it creates a good range of films for your business. So. All righty, uh, we're going to shout out uh, one dude who super chatted today. <laughs> thank you, RGC, RGC, RGC. Thank you for carrying it today. Much appreciate you, sir. Um, that, that helps out a great deal. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the info. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions about it. it like. What, does it does it keep it warmer in the summer or does it keep it warmer in the winter? Like, how does it act? Like, there's a lot of mystery around it, 
but it can be broken down actually very simply. It's just it's high quality, you can have high quality polyester, some glue, and something that uh, absorbs or reflects the heat. Those are really like the main advantages. And then the tricky thing here is like blocking out lots of heat while remaining clear. It's kind of like with camera lenses. So camera lenses, you can have a fast aperture, you can have a wide angle, and you can have um, fast aperture, wide angle. What was the other thing? Fast aperture, wide angle. Those two things are really hard to find together. Um, and oh no, autofocus, stuff like that. Like merging all those two things, all those things together, creates a really expensive lens and is really hard to achieve. Usually, you see like a a longer lens but will have a low aperture. But then when you have a short lens, it'll usually have like a slower aperture. So finding all those things together, then it's usually very, very expensive in like the camera world. So in the tint world, similar thing. You have uh, ceramic and you have clarity and merging all those things together. Like the more ceramic that you put in, the hazier the film's gonna be unless you make that ceramic really high end and then it makes everything expensive. So there's a lot that goes into it. Alrighty, my dudes. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for today, though. Thank you for hanging out. Um, he's waiting up front, so I'm going to cash him out. And uh, I got another set of doors coming in a little bit later, so I'm going to do that and some other stuff. So thank you all for tuning in today. I'm going to take off. Uh, it's Friday? Is today Friday? I guess we'll probably be back tomorrow then. I think I got somebody coming from, uh, from Ohio tomorrow. Long drive. So I got to be here for that. Alrighty, you guys have a good one. Bye.